So for the first year and a half after leaving the military, I was broke. I was living abroad in Ukraine with my fiance running a nonprofit. And although it was very satisfying, I was living off savings. Looking to make a career change, I decided to apply to business schools. Now, any of you guys that have gone through the process of getting your MBA, you know a lot of the top schools, they want to meet you in person. As such, I flew back to the United States and had interviews set up in Austin, Ithaca, and Boston. Now, the UT interview was pretty laid back, and being from Texas, I expected that. However, I was less confident about my interviews at Cornell and Harvard. To be straight up, gents, I was intimidated by these Ivy League schools. I grew up in a trailer park. I didn't know how to dress. I didn't know how to behave in these type of situations. That being said, I'm proud to say on my limited budget, I was able to put together three amazing outfits. My secret? Well, back in Kiev, I had made friends with a traveling tailor. If you're not familiar, these are guys that basically work out of a suitcase and represent usually a factory over in Asia, and they take your measurements and then build the suit to order. Now, the huge advantage of this, and I know now it's become a cliche, they cut out the middleman and the fit. Assuming you get a good tailor, and in my case, I did, the fit was immaculate. In total, if I remember correctly, I spent about $700 for one suit with extra trousers and three shirts. I borrowed a few neckties from a family friend, I picked up an inexpensive overcoat, and I shined up an old pair of dress shoes I had had for years. The results? I got compliments. I felt like a million bucks. I was confident. And then I was promptly rejected by Harvard and waitlisted by Cornell. Hey, what can I say? Your boy tried, right? And gents, the reason I'm telling you all this, I want you to know that you do not need money to have style. Now, to be clear, it definitely helps when you got the money, but style, gentlemen, is so much more. So first up, let's talk about one of the most important levers that doesn't cost money, but it does cost time, and that is your style knowledge. Now, I didn't realize it at the time, but my five-year stint in the Marine Corps had actually given me a deep knowledge of the importance of a uniform and the importance of fit. Now, as anyone who has served or has been a first responder can tell you, one of the most interesting things that happens when you put on a uniform is how it actually changes the way you see yourself. Now, this phenomenon, the idea that you can wear a piece of clothing and it affects not only the way you feel, but how you perform is called in clothed cognition. Literally, what you wear affects how you see yourself and how you act throughout the day. Now, the reason I'm telling you this, hopefully it's obvious, if you want to be perceived as a professional, if you want to act like a professional, then dress like a professional. Now, the next part of this knowledge is how the clothing makes those around you feel about you. Now, here's the deal. Human beings, we are lazy. Seriously, day to day, your mind is on autopilot and our mind does this to protect ourselves because there's just too much information. Now, to make things easier, your mind day to day is classifying most things coming at you in boxes, basically predetermined classifications. This person, non-threat, non-important. This person, non-threat, non-important. This person, non-threat, important. Why? Well, it depends on the industry, but let's say it's conservative New York City. Okay, the guy's wearing a suit. He's got a red tie. He's getting on the elevator here. I'm going to stay out of his way because he looks like he's going to be at the top level. Now, I know that could be completely wrong, but as human beings, this logic for the majority of us works day to day. But if you know this, why not hijack the system? And by that, I mean dress in a manner that other people show you respect without even knowing you. Now, in my story, I talked a little bit about shoes. I had a pair of dress shoes that I'd had for years and I I got them shined, polished up, and they looked good and they fit well. Now, the reality is a good pair of shoes can make or break an outfit. The reason for this is that shoes historically are an item that other people look to be able to measure them up and it's an end point. Whenever you're looking somebody up and down, you spend a little bit more time on the feet and of course, your eyes eventually rest on the face. Now, gents, if you're in the market for a new pair of shoes but you're on a tight budget, you need to check out today's sponsor, Bruno Mark. Now, gents, I've talked about Bruno Mark before and what I love about them is their timeless appeal. I love the fact that they are a low price shoe. Maybe you are on a limited budget. You want to try a new style. And gents, this is the best deal of the year. So, make sure you head over to Bruno Mark and get this exclusive pre-Black Friday offer. This is only available for a limited time. So, make sure you take advantage of this amazing deal before the offer expires. Now, I know most of this video, I've talked a little bit more about formal style, but when it comes to casual style, yeah, you want to love level it up. And gents, really quick, I want to give you a quick update on these mesh Oxfords. 
these sneakers right here. I wore these throughout the summer and absolutely loved them. Now I understand why these shoes are some of their best sellers because they're just great for everyday wear. That being said, if you're looking for a winter boot, especially one that's going to be water resistant, you want to check out their men's water repellent winter combat boots. And again, for those of you guys looking for a non leather boot that's going to be weather resistant, this boot fits the bill. But seriously, gents, get over to their website, look at all the different options. Again, what I like is when you get one pair of Bruno Mark, I find the size is consistent. So if you do find that, hey, this one fits great, it worked for me during the summer, then you can go on and get a pair of winter boots or a pair of winter shoes. And one thing I like about these boots right here is that they're lined. So if you want something that's going to be, again, warmer for the winter, look at the details on the boots. They did a really good job for the price you're paying, guys. This is an absolute steal. And of course, gents, I'm going to make sure you get the best deal on the web. So make sure to use that link when you go over to Bruno Mark and to use that code in the description of today's video. Guys, that code is going to ensure that you get the best deal on the web. The next tip to having style without having money is you need to understand versatility. Now, if you didn't catch in that first story, I talked about I picked up three shirts one suit with an extra pair of trousers. How many outfits do I have there? Well, assuming that every shirt worked with the suit, which they did, and then let's assume with the extra trousers that you could wear the outfits without the jacket, which I could. Well, the total outfits right there is six, not counting the different outfits I could change up if I brought in a variety of ties and maybe even a sports jacket. And in my situation, they were three different interviews in three different cities with three different people. So I could have worn the same thing. In any case, I wanted options. And that's what happens when you buy clothing with versatility. When everything matches, you have what's known as an interchangeable wardrobe. If the clothing you have in your interchangeable wardrobe can all mix and match, then it's a multiplication problem. With the final number, in this case, 16 pieces of clothing than giving me 256 total outfits. The next key to having style without money, and this one is perhaps the hardest for a lot of us guys, I know it was for me, and that is be open to feedback. In order for your style to get better, you have to be open to change and sometimes listening to other people and their opinions. Now, I'm just speaking for myself here, but I can be very pig headed. I like to think I'm really smart and the way I've been doing things, yeah, this is right. Case in point, from the age of 16 to about 26, I thought that I was an extra large in my sizing. I mean, at this point, I was five foot nine, 165 pounds. I don't know why I thought this size was right for me, but I did. And for years, I would not try on clothing that I felt was a bit too constricting, which come to find out is clothing that actually fit my body well. And I learned this because I went out shopping with a woman I respect, my sister, and she had me try on different styles and fits of jeans. She's like, hey, go to the dressing room, try these on. I promise you, you are going to look so much better. Now, initially, I thought the fit was too tight. It was uncomfortable. It actually wasn't. It was just unfamiliar. The comfort, I mean, I had room in these jeans and I naturally wore a 32. And again, I didn't go slim or skinny here. I just simply went with a regular fit versus a loose fit. And come to find out, actually, this looked a lot better, a lot more flattering on my body build. Now, gents, I'm sharing this with you because I want you to be open to the fact that your style can evolve. It can can get better, can also get worse. But in a lot of cases, you could simply make one or two adjustments to pieces that you're normally buying and wearing. And all of a sudden, you can evolve, you can improve your style and take it to the next level. The reality is so many of us get comfortable, we get stuck in a time loop. Yeah, this fit, this style's worked for me for the last decade. I'm going to continue to try to pull it off when really we've seen trends, not just trends, but actually classic styles start to move in a direction. And all of a sudden, you could bring in a new piece, a new fit that's going to flatter your new body type because let's face it, our bodies do change over time. Maybe it got better, maybe it got worse, but in any case, this new fit is going to complement your build so much better. The next key to having style without money is to know the name of your tailor. You've probably heard me say this multiple times in past videos and this may be your own name. It may be a friend of yours who you call in favors and he or she comes over and does the hemming on your jeans because yes, jeans can be hemmed. You don't want them, you know, the back to be falling apart and and dragging all that like string in that mess. Now, that never looks good. Those oversized shirts that you got on sale, but you're too cheap to throw them out. Okay, can you actually bring in the body? Make them look so much better by darting the backs, maybe even shortening the sleeves, maybe adjusting the overall fit of that neck. 
Which takes me to the next point of being able to do minor fixes and repairs on your own clothing. Because you don't want to not be wearing a jacket because it's missing a button or wear it when it's missing a button or, you know, a zipper has come off or it needs to be replaced. Guys, these are repairs that aren't too difficult. I mean, seriously, gents, Rambo, he knew how to sew. That's how he stitched his arm back together. Life can get expensive when you can't repair loose threads that are tearing those shorts apart, making those trousers unsightly. And again, this doesn't need to be perfect. This is just about you being a little self-reliant. Now, if you've made it this far, I've got a special treat for you. I'm going to share with you the story of one of the best dressed men in the last 100 years who you have probably never heard of. His name was Anthony Joseph Drexel Biddle Jr. Now, straight up, the guy was born with a lot of advantages. He was born into wealth. He married into even more wealth. But what I like about his story is he kind of screwed it all up, but then he joined the army, fought in World War I, then went into finance, and of course was ruined during the Great Depression. Now, his life took an interesting path in the mid-1930s whenever his social skills came to the top and he was appointed a diplomat. Specifically, in 1937, the ambassador to Poland. Within two years, Germany was invading Poland and all the sudden, Biddle was pushed to the forefront because of all of his connections throughout Europe. He joined the Polish government in exile in France till 1940. And in 1941 from London, worked with the governments in exile of Belgium, Czechoslovakia, Greece, Luxembourg, the Netherlands, Norway, and Yugoslavia, and worked as an ambassador with these countries till 1943. In 1944, he resigned from the State Department and joined the U.S. Army as a lieutenant colonel to work directly for Eisenhower, giving Ike direct insights with his contacts in the underground movements and free military units in occupied nations. The intelligence he provided was used in Operation Overlord, the invasion of France. After the war, he continued on with Eisenhower's staff, helping with the reconstruction of Europe. Now, performing all of these duties, Biddle always looked good. Tony, as he was affectionately known, always wore a suit, always had the cut on, and the guy was just known for his style. But he had a secret. You see, Tony Biddle only owned seven suits. In fact, when they cleared out his belongings when he passed away, people were amazed at how spartan of a life the guy apparently lived. Yet, this was a guy known for his style, appearing on the cover of Life magazine in 1943. His wide lapels and thin tie combination had him pushing the envelopes of fashion at a time when people weren't supposed to be thinking about this stuff. Gents, the reason I'm telling you this, you don't have to spend a lot of money. You don't have to own a lot of clothing to be a well-dressed man, to have style. Gents, your wallet does not define your style. Your choices in life do. And speaking of choices, what video to watch next? Well, gentlemen, I've got you covered with a great video. Boom, right here. Oh, yeah. Check it out. Boom, right there. Oh, yeah. Check it out. Good, good video.